fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> continued his fight for justice long after outlaw bands and hostile Indians were a thing of the past in the western United States. There were still criminals who evaded the law rather than defying it. There were still honest men and women who stood in danger of losing life and property. Men and women whom the law could not help and whose only hope for justice lay in the masked rider of the plains. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for Mercer City! Devil's waiting on the trail ahead! I am Silver! Away! A woman in her early 30s mounted the steps of one of the larger houses in Mercer City, crossed the porch, and rapped on the door. Good afternoon, Mom. Something you wanted? There most certainly is. I wish to speak to my husband. Huh? I'm Mrs. Christie. Well, now, Mom, there must be some mistake. Mr. Christie lives here right enough, but I never heard as how he had a wife. You sure you've uh, come to the right place? This is where Thomas Christie lives? Yes, that's then right. Then I've but... come to the right place. And my husband's going to have plenty to explain. Just stand aside. Now, wait, Mom. You can't go in. Uh, where is my husband? Mr. Christie's in his room. Well, then I'm going can't... there. Show me the way. Mom, wait. There's some mistake, I tell you. He don't Are ha- you going to take me to him or must I find him myself? I, uh... Very well. I'll find him. No, wait, please, ma'am. Now, don't try to stop me. But you can't go in there. out here? Uh, Mr. Foster, this lady is claiming to be Mr. Christie's wife and... Oh, it's you, is it? Well, now maybe I'll get to the bottom of this. Yes? Why hasn't my husband written me? Why do I have to come all the way from Texas to find One out? One moment. I... Jed. Yeah? Have you repaired my saddle, as I ask you? Not yet, Mr. Foster. I ain't had time. Then see to it at once. You mean... At once. Sure, Mr. Foster, sure. And now then, we can talk. I'm not here to talk to you, Mr. Foster, even if you are my husband's lawyer. I'm here to see Tom. Why do you think he hasn't written you? That's what I mean to find out. Mrs. Christie, I'm going to speak frankly. We're alone, so if you see fit to repeat anything I say, I can always deny it. We're the only witnesses to this conversation. Well? I hate to say this, but uh, your husband wishes a separation. He... That's not true. Unfortunately, it is. I'm sorry for your sake, and I've done my best to make Tom come to reason. But his mind's made up. He's perfectly willing to see that you're provided with what monies you'll need for your support. I won't he... believe any such thing until Tom tells me so himself. It won't do any good to be stubborn. I'll tell him I'm here, and I'm not leaving until he's talked to me. I can't. When your husband inherited the J.X. ranch upon the death of his uncle, he employed me to come here with him as his legal advisor. If I were to go against his wishes now, it would mean my dismissal. Surely you appreciate my position. I don't know why and I don't know how, but if Tom wishes to leave me, somehow you're behind it. 
Just as surely as I'm standing here, you're behind it. Please. I never trusted you, and I told Tom so before he went to you. Well, if you're going to question my honesty, I, I can... I most certainly do. Why, well, Tom and I never had a quarrel in the ten years we've been married. I love my husband, Mr. Foster, and, and he loves me. Unless you've done something to poison his mind against me. I'm afraid you're letting your natural anger affect your discretion. Is that I... my husband's room? Well, I... Is uh... it? Well, yes, Then but... I'm going in there. You can't, I... Hey... Putting the dickens is all the chatter for out here. Uh, who's this, Foster? She, uh... Who are you? Huh? Me? <laughs> well, my handle's Christy, ma'am. Tom Christy. Why? You're not. Oh, Mr. Foster, where's my husband? What have you done with him? Uh, ma'am, if Tom here isn't your husband, I'm afraid you must have made some mistake. Don't lie to me. You came to Mercer City with my husband, and you know it. This man is not my husband. You're up to something. Don't you... excite yourself, please. Either you tell me what's become of Tom, or, or I go to the sheriff. Hey, Foster, what's the matter with her, eh? <laughs> is she local? I very much <laughs> fear that she is. All right. It's easy enough for the two of you to laugh when I ask questions. Now we'll see if you'll laugh when the sheriff questions you. Ma'am, I promise you we'll be happy to answer a thousand questions for the sheriff if he wishes it. We'll see. <laughs> Foster, I don't know if this is a doggone funny or not. She ain't fooling She'll go to the sheriff just like she said and she would. And welcome. I've prepared the sheriff. Just the same, and I If don't... you're still worried, forget it. I intend to call on the sheriff myself. <laughs> sheriff Muncie listened with interest to the strange story told him by the woman who called herself Beth Christie. And, and now, Sheriff, some man is here passing himself off as my husband... I want both him and Mr. Foster arrested. Hmm, not so fast, ma'am. I want to get all this straight. I reckon you'll admit yourself you told me a story that ain't easy to believe. Every word I've told you is the truth. Uh-huh. You say you never heard from your husband in all the time since he left Texas to come here and claim the ranch was left in. That's right. Well, that was nearly four months ago. Didn't you think it kind of funny you didn't get no word at all? No, at first I didn't. Tom's a poor hand at writing. Well, I hoped for letters, but I didn't really expect any right away. It wasn't until so much time went by and my letters were ignored that... Well, you don't sound crazy. Sound crazy? Well, why should I? Uh, you want the truth? I've made a thousand-mile journey to get it. Then I'll give it to you straight. Mr. Foster's already mentioned you to me. Fact is, he spoke to you several times. Yes. Uh, mind, I'm just repeating what he told me, ma'am. Uh, what he said was that where he come from, it was well known that uh, you weren't quite right in your head. Oh, the very idea. Uh, that you got funny notions, and being hitched to Mr. Christie was one of them. It's a lie. Every word he told you is a lie. Sheriff, don't you realize what this means? Mr. Foster told you this just to discount and advance anything I might say. He's, he's done something to my husband. He's, perhaps he's, he's killed him. And he and this imposter are getting ready to steal the JX ranch for themselves. That's a mighty serious accusation, ma'am. And true. Well, I don't... Well, I see she came here, Sheriff. Mr. Foster, what do you mean by lying about me to the Sheriff? Do you think I can't prove the truth? Do you think for one minute you can get away with anything like this and the law not find it out? You... Sheriff, surely you don't believe this woman. Foster, I don't know what to think. But you can oh, see I that... recollect all you told me about her believing it herself. But just the same, even though she tells a funny story, in some ways it sounds kind of convincing. And she sure don't act crazy. You forget, Sheriff, that it's quite possible for a person to be insane upon one subject while entirely sane about everything else. It's well known. I can show you, you where... You're the most wicked man I've ever known. Please, Keep I... Keep still. Sheriff. Yeah? It's clear that Mr. Foster has made it impossible for you to accept my unsupported words. Unfortunately, I, I brought no proof of my identity with me. I had no idea that any such proof would be necessary. Well, I sure wish you had brought it, ma'am, if there is any. If you want to see justice done, it won't matter. No. Would, would you accept the word of the sheriff at home? Why, of course. Very well, then. Write him for the truth. Sheriff Price has known me for years. He'll tell you that Mr. Foster's lying. It'll probably take between three weeks and a month for a reply, so, so in the meantime, I demand that you forbid Mr. Foster or this man calling himself my husband to dispose of any of the property they've claimed. Will you do that? I certainly don't see anything again it. No. How do you like that? <laughs> I think it's a splendid arrangement. What? As a matter of fact, I'd intended to make the identical suggestion myself. Sheriff. Yeah? You have my word that none of the JX property will be sold until this matter is cleared up to your satisfaction. On one condition. What condition is that? That if you find I've told you the truth, as you will, that you'll permit me to make arrangements for this woman's care. 
course, Mr. Christie is in no sense responsible for her mental condition, but nevertheless, he feels he should do what he can to help her. Under the care of a doctor, you, she might... You're hateful. Mr. Foster, that can wait. But I'm writing that letter and sending it to Texas today. Good. Fine. And for now, all I got is this to say. One of you is lying fit to bust. And when I find out which one it is, I'll make the fur fly. It did not take long for the story of the conflicting claims to spread. And several weeks later, after a trip to Mercer City, the Lone Ranger's faithful Indian companion, Tonto, returned to their secret camp and repeated what he had heard. I want to have a look at these people you told me about, Kimasabe, so I can make up my mind about them for myself. Mm. Hey, Ryan. It won't be necessary. Wait for me here. Uh. I expect to be back before dark. Come on, Silver. Come on. Several hours later... They told me the letter had come. Have you read it? Did it say what You'd I... You'd better sit down, ma'am. But I... Uh, take your chair. You'll likely have a couple of minutes to wait. But, but can't you tell me? I ain't even opened the letter yet, ma'am. All I know is that it must be the one because it's got Sheriff Price's name right on the back of the envelope. But why haven't you opened it? Oh, read it, please. Don't you see that I... I ain't opening it till Mr. Foster and Mr. Christie are here, too. I've sent for them. They should be along right quick now. Then we'll all get to the bottom of this together. But... You'll arrest them if that letter backs up my story. So doggone fast, ma'am, it'll make their heads swim. Thank you. That's all I wanted to know. And here they come now. I told you wouldn't have long to wait. Good afternoon, sir. You sent for us? I did, Foster. Howdy, Mr. Christie. Howdy. Uh, Hello there, Doc. What are you doing here? I asked Dr. English to accompany us. I hope you have no objection. Sure not. Sure not. Uh, Help yourselves to chairs. There's enough to go around, I reckon. Here, what do you want us for, Sheriff? I have a letter from Sheriff Price. And it says? Well, what it says, I don't know. Like I was just saying before you got here, I didn't want to open it till you was all here at once. Well, we're here. What's holding you back? Well, nothing. We'll see what's in it right now. Mr. Foster. Yes? I wonder that you had the courage to come here when you know that the truth will see you jailed. Ma'am, we're not here to argue. One way or another, this will be decided when the sheriff has told us what that letter says. Oh, please, what does it say? Here, just a second. I ain't quite finished with it. Ah... Yes. Now, ma'am, promise me you ain't going to take on none. I ain't doubting at all that you believe every word of what you told me. But it's just the wrong idea you somehow got in your head. You, you mean that... Sheriff Price writes the same as when uh, was told me by Mr. Foster and Mr. Christie here. He says your real name's Mrs. Johnson. And it's well known where you come from that you ain't just exactly uh, responsible for the notions you sometimes get. no. Jeff Price would never write that. It, it's not true. You, you haven't read the letter right. You, you can't have. I... I asked you not to make a fuss, ma'am. Well, thank you, Sheriff, for permitting us to prove our honesty. Well, that's all right. I hope this delay ain't caused you too much trouble. Well, not at all. I'd like to remind you of the suggestion I made earlier. Knowing what the letter would say, we brought Dr. English with us. Yeah? At our request, and unknown to Mrs. Johnson, of course, he's had her under observation. He believes with time he might effect a cure. Mr. Christie is willing to pay him to make the attempt. Dr. English would take Mrs. Johnson into his home and... You can't. Jeff, you have to believe me. This is a trick I tell you. Please, you Hush, ma'am. Hush now. Well, Sheriff? Mr. Foster, if you want my opinion, I think after all the trouble this lady's caused you, it's one of the finest offers I've ever heard made. I got no objection at all. I only hope the doc can help her. Take her with you, Doctor. Perhaps you'd better help, Christy. Come Come on, Mrs. Johnson. Let me go. Jeff, don't kill me just like they must have killed Tom. You don't know what you're doing, Jeff. Make them let me go, please. Now, please, now, please don't let me go. You're doing good, ma'am. Uh, just go along peaceable, ma'am. It ain't going to do you no manner of good to kick up a rumpus. Please, you now, can't. Come on, Poor woman. In many ways, a most excellent woman, Sheriff. It's a pity that she's so obviously insane. Oh, Curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. It was just at dusk when the Lone Ranger returned to the camp where Tonto was waiting. Oh, oh, Silver. Oh, boy. Oh, there. Oh. What you find out? <laughs> Several months they got word from Texas that bore out Foster's story. Oh. And yet, what matter? Tonto, I don't know. Foster and Christie both claimed the woman was insane. Several months they wrote to Texas and got an answer stating their claim was true. That should be all there is to it. We needed other places, Kimasabi, and we have no excuse for staying here now that this matter is settled. Uh, but somehow, Tonto, I can't help feeling something's wrong. That something's going on here we know nothing about. Why you think that? That's exactly it, Tonto. There's not one reason in the world, as far as I know, why I should think it. And I can't get it out of my head. Uh, I think what's troubling me most is that I disliked both Foster and Christie when I first saw them. Foster's too smooth, and Christie reminds me more of an outlaw than a prosperous rancher. Oh, <laughs> that right. And I can't forget how terrified the woman who claims to be Mrs. Christie sounded when Sheriff Muncie allowed a doctor employed by Foster to take her away. Insane or not, she was in fear of her life. Mm, not bad. We should ride on, Kimasabi. Ah. Uh, but... What we do? But we're not. Tata, we don't leave this district until I've learned my suspicions are false. Several days later, in the home of Dr. English. Oh, hello, Foster. You've kept me waiting, Doctor. I'm sorry, I didn't know you were here. I, uh, I've been in my patient's room to see that she eats her food. How is she? <laughs> weaker. Much weaker. Does she suspect... That her food is poisoned? Certainly not. I told you I'd give her only small amounts at a time. You see, I want it to look as though she's gradually failing from uh, natural causes. <laughs> I've already explained to the sheriff that she may not live. You told the sheriff that? Oh, well, no, there's no cause to be alarmed. I had to tell him something, didn't I? If he wasn't given to understand that she was ill, how would I be able to explain her, uh, her death afterwards? Uh, yes. Yes, perhaps you're right. And, of course, I explained that I was doing everything in my power to save her. <laughs> you're a good man, English. I see you're going to be worth what you're costing us. Did you doubt that I would be? I take nothing for granted. Nothing and no one. You'd be a fool if you did. By the way, I'm glad that you came. There's, there's something I've been wanting to ask you. Yes? That letter the sheriff got. Naturally, I knew it hadn't come from the authorities in Texas, but I was wondering how you'd, uh, you'd manage it. <laughs> Very easily. Easily? When Muncie wrote, I offered to take the letter to the post office but I didn't mail it. Instead, I mailed a letter I'd written to a friend of mine. Acting upon my instructions, he replied to Muncie, signing Sheriff Price's signature. <laughs> Simple, huh? <laughs> Very. And this fellow you call Christie, who is he really? Aren't you getting rather inquisitive? Well, after all, I'm certainly in this deeply enough to be trusted, aren't I? I hope you don't forget that. If you ever do talk... Well, you will pay just as surely as we will. Uh, but to uh, Christie... Isn't Christie. Huh? Ever hear of an outlaw called Yank Billings? I think so, yes. Why? <laughs> well, that's the man you know as Christie. You... You mean you hired an outlaw to play the part? Exactly. You fool. Careful, man. But what if he's recognized? Good heavens, if the fellow's an outlaw, there must be a dozen lawmen who know him by sight. What if one of them were to ride this way? What if... If they the... did, they'd simply remark he resembled Billings and let it go at that. Yes, but Because I... in two weeks' time, the man they believe to be Billings will be dead. Dead? I got word of it today. The man they're holding in Kansas as Billings was just tried and sentenced. He's to be hanged on the first of the month. I'm afraid I don't understand. What... Why the... do you think I hired Billings to play Christie's part? I don't know. I supposed you were friends. I don't make friends of outlaws unless there's a reason for it. No, English. That isn't the answer. I hired Billings because he resembles Christie very closely. 
I see. And the man they tried and sentenced in Kansas is the real Tom Christie. Well... I saw to that. I turned him over to the law there with enough faked evidence to hang him a thousand times. As his lawyer, I possessed all his credentials. Those credentials established Billings as Christie. When the real Christie and his wife are dead, the only two people in the world who would question his identity will be out of the way. Splendid. And not only that, but Christie's death will end the law's search for Billings. <laughs> you had this plan better than I thought, Foster. Everything's blown over. We sell Christie's property here and skip out. Soon? As soon as I think it's safe. English. Perhaps you're thinking I talk too much. But I've had a purpose in telling you this. Yes? I want you to realize fully just how important it is that Mrs. Christie dies without her death attaching any suspicion to us. Take my word for it, Foster. It won't. Good. If it does, it means the loss of a fortune and our necks. That evening, Sheriff Muncie drew his horse to a stop in front of his office. Oh, who oh boy. Who oh there? Who oh boy. Evening, Sheriff. Where have you been? Down to Doc English's place, Sam. Yeah? Say, is it straight what they're saying? That that woman there is mighty sick? The doc says he don't hardly expect her to live. Gosh, I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, well, but maybe it's for the best. If she's crazy like I hear tell... Oh, sure, she's out of her head right enough. Failing fast. Poor doc's been working so hard to save her, he looks near tuck it out. I heard that, too. Well, that's the way things happen sometimes. Can't be helped, I reckon. You'll have to excuse me, Sam. I got work to do inside. Oh, Sure. Don't light that lamp, Sheriff. What the... And don't call out... A masked man. Right. You... We're going to have a talk. What are you after? Justice. I don't and know... a woman's it... life. Makes sense. I will. Sheriff, you've been tricked. The woman who claims to be Mrs. Christie is Mrs. Christie. The man you know as Christie is an imposter. And Foster's behind the whole scheme. You loco. English is in Foster's pay. And he isn't trying to save Mrs. Christie's life. He's attempting murder. You're as crazy as she is. He's slowly poisoning her. If you ain't crazy, then you're up to some crooked game. My information comes to me from a friend who wouldn't lie, Sheriff. He stayed close to Foster without Foster's knowledge. Ever since you received the letter, you thought came from Sheriff Price. Get out. You're not going to give me a chance to prove what I say. I I'm... said get out. I'm not leaving, and neither are you. Sheriff, lock that door. What do you We're mean by... We're staying here until it's time to act, Sheriff. We're not going to be disturbed. <laughs> It was not long after this that Foster and the man who called himself Tom Christie were startled with the sudden appearance of Dr. English. What's up? Hey, what's the idea of busting in here without knocking? Who's around? Look here, English, you can't... You, you want us to hang, huh? What's that you said? Better let me talk. Answer my question, I'll be alone. We are. What's happened? I heard an Indian talking to Mrs. Christie through the window of her room. You let someone talk to her when you went around? Do you think I would have if I could have helped it? Go on. She's got friends, Foster. Who they are outside of the Indian, I don't know, but they mean to help her. What? They can't. They can if we don't do something about it. But I tell you... I we... know they can. I heard Mrs. Christie tell the Indian there's evidence she overlooked that would prove her identity. What evidence? I don't know. She didn't say. The Indian hushed her up. I think he guessed I was listening at the door. You clumsy idiot. I suppose you would have done better. I couldn't have done worse. I'll bet you never even got a look at that redskin. I'll bet you don't know where he went, when he left, Maybe what he... not. But I do know he's coming back. When? Tomorrow night. He promised her just before he left. And I don't like this. Foster, if things go wrong, if I get turned over to the law... Shut I'll... up. I'm trying to think. What do we do? Well, there's one thing we can't do. What's that? Let her talk to that Indian again. But if he has friends... You I... said he's returning tomorrow night? Yes. Very well. Let him. Yes, but I... do him no good. Yank, get our hats. What for? We're going back with English. You mean... That... Mrs. Christie's been sick, hasn't she? Well, she dies tonight. Yank, get a move on. <laughs> Less than 30 minutes later, Dr. English rapped lightly on Mrs. Christie's door. Are you awake? Uh, I'm awake. Foster. Good evening. How are you feeling, ma'am? Get them out of here, doctor. Get them out. But what's the matter? They want to see me die. They're, they're killers. They killed my husband. Get them out. Oh, I'm sorry you feel this way, ma'am. 
We just called because we've been told you were ill and wanted to see how you were... Please get them out. Of course, if you'd rather not talk to them. Here, drink this first, then we'll leave. What, what is it? Just something to make you well again. Now drink it down. It won't taste bad at all. No. But you have to take medicine when I order it, you know. And just as soon as you've taken it, we'll leave you to yourself. I... Come on, now. Very well, I... Yeah, I must. <laughs> there, that's much better. Don't touch that. Say, hey, what? The... Come along, Sheriff. Sheriff, what are you doing here with a masked man? That's my business. But I... Quiet. Time to keep them covered. Uh huh. This is Christy. Give me that glass. Here, leave that alone. That's her medicine. You this can't take that. This is medicine, huh? It is. She needs it. Give it to her at once. And if it's medicine, Doctor, you shouldn't be afraid to drink it. But I swallow this. Let me go. No, take it away. Sheriff, can't you do something? I don't see why I'd object to drinking that there stuff. If it ain't harmful, Doc. Come on, let's see you down it. No, no, I won't. Then perhaps Foster will. Keep that away from me. How about you? No, I won't touch it. Sheriff, this fellow has no right to order us around. He's... Just a second. Uh, but the masked fellow said it was mighty likely you fellows would be trying to poison this here lady. I'll tell you frankly, I told him he was loco. But it's beginning to look as though maybe he wasn't. He is. Then I'll leave it up to you to prove it. If he was lying, you can prove it in just one second by drinking what's in that glass. But, uh, if you won't uh, drink it, then it's plain enough he was telling the truth. Wait, no, please, don't. I'll force it down it. No, stop it. No, I... That's all the proof I need. Stranger, you was right. We're blessed to you. Watch out. Let me get him. Oh, my arm. Oh. Another move from one of you and you'll get worse. You three skunks just heist your hands. Another try like that and I'll blast you myself. You got us into this, English. You hadn't been fool enough to let the Indian hear you. <laughs> Foster, you got things twisted around. Huh? It wasn't the dark here to let the engine hear him. It was the engine and Mrs. Christie that let their cells be heard. What are you talking about? The masked man told me your scheme. The engine talked to Mrs. Christie when he knew the doc would be listening. All that about coming back again tomorrow night was just a fool you. The masked man figured it'll force you to try and shut Mrs. Christie's mouth before tomorrow night come around. Correct. Yes, so. Jeff, make them tell what they've done with my husband. Ma'am, that was something I near forgot. Yes? The masked fellow told me to tell you not to worry. But I... He's got a good notion where your husband is. And he's promised to get him back for you safe and sound. Oh, thank heaven. Now you fellas start marching. And don't waste time. You've got a lot of explaining to do before you hang. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.